Hi, this is Tim Riley, Tyrant Slayer Studios, government accountability activist, Le looking to speak with uh, Kevin Allen this afternoon. Okay, hold on. Humid tomorrow, 85 to near 90. Mostly cloudy with a passing shower tomorrow night. Mild and muggy around 70. Then Sunday, partly sunny with afternoon showers and thunderstorms mid-80s. Weather every 10 minutes on Connecticut Today. You're listening to Connecticut Today with Paul Pacelli on WICC 600. Connecticut Today. Kevin Allen's going in for Paul Pacelli. He's having a Monday. That's a great call today. We're finishing up this week. We've been down here. Uh, I've been down here at the station, WICC 600. And you know what? We get some great callers. we got a good caller here, Tim Riley. Uh, I know you from my other platform. Uh, you got something you want to talk about? Well, sir, I, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on uh, filling in for Mr. Paul Pacelli. This is a great radio station, and uh, Thank you. you've done a very fine job. It is uh, with uh, great privilege and honor. I am pleased to join you here again today. Uh, I've been listening to the conversations. A lot of interesting things going on. I, I was reading some some things last night about the the wives of law enforcement in this state and. Uh, you know, I was just calling to see if you'd like to drum up a conversation, uh, help me enlighten your audience, this audience, uh, uh, you know, as to who I am and who my colleagues are, what we're out there trying to do. Uh, I think there's a lot of very unfair press uh, in regard to our work. Uh, I think we're often perceived as, uh, you know, using harassment tactics seems to be a common theme that the, the media uses. They demonize I, our I, work. I, I say it, Tim. Tim, in all fairness, I'm like, you know, these are the agitators. I use those terms. So here is an opportunity. Why don't you explain exactly what your platform, if you could? You know, these are short segments. It's not like the podcast. So remember that. Yes, sir. <laughs> you gotta be, but, yeah, explain it quickly to the, to the listeners what you actually do and why you do it. Okay. I'm uh, operating a YouTube channel called Tyrant Slayer Studios, and I also have a web page under construction, tyrantslayerstudios.com. I'm a member of what's called Activism News Network, and there are 20 of us around the nation that are simply trying to help the citizens be more aware of their rights and what they can do with them before they actually have to apply them in any given situation on a regular, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we are trying to protect ourselves from overreach uh, on behalf of government departments and um, a good way to put it is uh, we are not the enemy of good police officers. In fact, the, the worst nemesis of any good police officer in America today is a bad police officer. And we're out there trying to expose these people because there's bad apples in every industry. We're out there trying to expose the actions and activities that they are engaged in and how they destroy lives, destroy families. I'm doing an interview tonight with a female out of Kansas who stumbled upon our community only about a year and a half ago and just wishes she knew about us four years ago when her son was criminally trespassed from public property and and paid a, a serious price for that and and you know lost his job and things of that nature and a lot of people need help in the education and it works both ways we want to help good officers maintain their positions and better engage with the public so that we can have more public trust. Uh, I know that the police in this country want public trust and they want a good viable relationship with the people. And I think it's very important incumbent upon our public officials to try and work with us as opposed to demonizing us all the time. So let me, uh, Tim, you, good opening uh, explanation, really the platform you uh, work on and you and I have had healthy discussion, and, and, you know, we've evolved to understand that we respect each other and disagree on many topics. But at the same time, Tim, I ask you this. I asked you before on an interview, you're driving down the road, you pull over, you see uh, uh, an officer in, uh, interrogating or however you might interpret it, investigating uh, uh, a, maybe a vehicle on the side of the road. Do you pull over typically, put the camera on, and start reviewing that? Um. I see an opportunity in most of those cases. In that particular case I was involved in, the female did look distressed, so I did. I was compelled to stop. We parked well far enough away. I actually had to walk maybe a tenth of a mile to get to the scene, and I was staying about 30, 40 feet from each of the officers, leaving them plenty of room within compliance of the law. Now, if the officer is distracted with me and feels that I might be disturbing his 
investigation. It is his job, and it is written in the law that he is supposed to put up tape to restrict my access to that scene. Without the presence of tape, there is no indication to me that it's going to be an issue to walk close to that scene and simply create an adjective record of what is happening between the engagement of the private citizen and our public official. But isn't it, isn't it fair to say that really you don't really know what's going on when you come upon a scene like you explained? And when you may get involved, you might actually endanger, maybe even the person you think you're helping, the situation could get worse because of your engagement. Is that fair to ask that question? That is a very fair question, but it's not something I see happening uh, at all, uh, even remotely uh, comparable to a regular occurrence. It's not something that, that we see in our line of work. Um, just like an officer is going to exercise discretion on a case-by-case -case basis, we as First Amendment auditors, essentially journalists doing the job that our television journalists are just not doing anymore, uh, you know, we're out there trying to create that transparency, that adjective record, and we will refrain from engaging in certain situations if we know some of what is involved, like a standoff with guns, uh, you know, pulling up on a traffic stop, you know, it's it's risky, but there are, you know, people have, you know, good wits and good sharp minds in this community, and we exercise a level of standard and, and discretion and find ourselves safe most of the time and, uh, you know, not getting involved or roped into a situation that metastasizes beyond our control. Again, talking to Tim Riley, and he is a tyrant slayer nation here in Connecticut and across the country. You're affiliated with many folks in this same line of work. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, how, activism. How, many, how many strong? You can talk about that. We have um, officially... 20 members, uh, but the community itself on YouTube is very large. Activism News Network is all across the United States, and we all travel. We do everything from Second Amendment audits, First Amendment audits, cop watching. Uh, we, we will try to help citizens on occasion, you know, not necessarily insert ourselves into the scene, but, you know, if the individual in the vehicle being pulled over takes notice that they're being filmed, and they are engaging with us, we will respond to them and remind them, hey, you don't have to answer any questions. You don't have to consent to a, a vehicle search. You know, it's best that you remain silent. You know, it, we, we, we just want to de-escalate everything, save all of the taxpayers and citizens some money, stop the police from doing so much paperwork, you know, prevent, prevent a possible lawsuit because these lawsuits are getting out of control. And those lawsuits ultimately you know, they don't hurt that officer. They don't hurt that, that department, uh, department, aside from the bad public, you know, the publicity. But the taxpayers ultimately foot the bill. And that is the problem. And I think if we can illustrate and articulate that professionally and, and, and be on scene to create transparency and hold our government accountable for its actions, uh, I think people are going to be you know, willing to, to subscribe to that and, and want to see more of it. They just, they're not sure right now what we're doing and why. And all of the publicity about us, all of it is, is normally on a regular basis, you know, we're equated to terrorists by, by you know, the Gateway Pundit, uh, U.S. News, uh, you know, even the, the New York Post put out a hit piece on a very professional, high standard gentleman who is fresh on the scene in this community. And he's, he's over 50,000 subscribers already. He's only a mere months old. And, uh, you know, he had it out with, with the city of Danbury in a number of egregious episodes, which contrasted with mine. I was just there days before him. I went and did audits and had no problem. I went and looked at the comprehensive annual financial report of the city of Danbury. And I know Danbury has $194 million. And I know what their assets and investments are, and, and that's what an audit is. He went and tried to do the same thing, and he was criminally trespassed. He's been banned from the library in that city. And you're talking, you're talking about that trending story that's out there right now. We're talking to Tim Riley, and we're winding down right here before a break. Tim, i got to tell you, it's an interesting conversation. I still haven't wrapped my head around it. I'm sorry completely. I'm still that support the blue kind of guy. I wore a badge for so long. But I do think this. This is a conversation everyone has to have. Tim, thank, uh, thanks for calling in today on WICC 600.